This is Openly Hostile Opinions. With your host, Casey and Jay. What the hell is wrong with you? I can do anything I want to. You can do anything I want to. Now we're cooking with evil guys. What the voice of people? I'm watching this show. Bigot rape and discrimination. The crimes which are weakening America. Hey, let's get this party started. Mom? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's podcast of Openly Hostile Opinions. As you can see, uh, I have my friend Jay next to you. You lost a lot of weight, Jay. Yeah, well, I've been working on it. I, I've gone <laughs> vegan, and uh, the liposuction, the home liposuction kit's been working out really well. Uh, it's a Hoover connected to a tiny tube. It's not real... Uh, <laughs> Sanitary. I've had a few infections, oh, really? so that's why I'm not really here today. Oh, okay. Uh, but the infections are, you know, they're weeping and cleaning up pretty good. <laughs> I put some bacitracin on it, and I, oh, I should be okay. <laughs> they, they said I could probably keep my leg. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little taller, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jay, Jay is sick today. He is fucking, I don't know if he has AIDS or what's going I'm on. I'm pretty sure it's AIDS. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's AIDS. <laughs> so we got our, uh, a guest host today, or this week. Uh, his name is Kevin. Uh, Hi, everyone. <laughs> not Kevin from the Minions movie. <laughs> well, allegedly. Yeah. Uh, me and Kevin probably known each other for what five, six years. Kevin and I. Whatever. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is this isn't an English show. <laughs> oh well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's a dick. <laughs> he, he's he's a fucking. My asshole. first name's Richard. <laughs> And uh, yeah, me, me and Kevin have uh, had Kevin and I. <laughs> fun. And this is the way the show's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm bummed. Kevin and I, or Kevin can go fuck himself. <laughs> um, That's not very nice. Yeah, we we've had some experiences together, like uh, anything from losing, you know. 60 golf balls on a golf course to hitting deer at four in the morning <laughs> yeah not at the same time though <laughs> yeah not at the same time <laughs> we uh yeah we've had some experiences um actually last time we hung out uh we were playing golf uh we were drinking a little heavily uh we were blaring metallica <laughs> at a on, country club it was great, <laughs> it they, was great. they loved us <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I they thought we were the 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 bee's knees yeah the bee's knees <laughs> We, had, we actually got in trouble. They're like, hey, could you guys hurry up a little bit? I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I went through like 60 balls that night because I sliced so bad. And ha, the whole time, it was just me looking for lost well, golf that's balls. The first like five holes watching. I wish I had video of watching you swing because all you did was you just wanted to hit it as hard as possible. Yeah, happy But Gilmore. you would swing. You were like happy Gilmore, except, <laughs> except worse. Like you would swing your whole body around and lift, <laughs> lift your legs off the ground. And I'm like, wow, that's everything you shouldn't do when golfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm horrible at golfing. You got better. You yeah, got better. I did. I did. I got like one good hit on me. <laughs> yep, that's the one that gets you addicted. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, one time I thought it was a good idea to get cigarettes at four in the morning. We're driving and I'm fucking, you know, cruising, jamming the music. And Kevin just goes, oh, dear, I fucking plowed that thing. I was blaring my music. I listened to my music pretty loud. No breaks. <laughs> yeah. No breaks. We're I didn't even involved. hit I knew it was dead. I just didn't Thump. even. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just kept going because I hit that deer so hard. And I was blaring my music. It was full blast. It slid. It slid on the road and hit the guardrail so hard I heard it above the music. Like, it was just like, <laughs> boom! That was a very surreal moment. <laughs> <laughs> just like, deer, thump. <laughs> it, it was crazy. A little more than a thump, though. Yeah. Oh, man. Because <laughs> I think we were doing 60 or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, we were going. Well, you were. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> hey, Kevin, I think we should go get some cigarettes. Really? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I think sorry. early in the evening, you're like, take my keys so I don't drive or something like that. <laughs> How dare you, Kevin? I was not under the influence. <laughs> I didn't say you were. <laughs> All right. With, with that being said, let's go right ahead and move along to our beer of the week. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Kevin likes beer. <laughs> um, this week, we are drinking Saranac. Uh, Kevin's actually heard of this place before. I never have. It's an upstate New York brewery. Yes. It is uh, a Saranac s'more porter. This sounds fucking disgusting. 
This <laughs> this porter tastes like chocolate, marshmallow, and graham cracker. <laughs> oh, God. It's brewed with a blend of caramel, biscuit, brown, and roasted malts, and aged with chocolate and vanilla. Ugh. Sounds like barf. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Um, you but said, we haven't tried it yet. <laughs> you said it's from upstate New York? Yeah, Saranac Brewery is a New York brewery. Oh, have you ever been there? You just heard of them before. I've been to New York. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, the state north of us. <laughs> so let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try this. Cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. It does have some chocolate nuances to it. I only taste the graham cracker. I get a little marshmallow. I, yeah. it, I get Actually, it all. now the marshmallow is coming. Yeah. It, at first, all I tasted was like chocolate and graham cracker. Now the marshmallow is coming. It's actually not as strong as a flavor I thought it would be. I thought it would be overpowering. I don't think it's terrible. No. It's actually very weak, I'd say, a little bit, especially for a porter. It seems it's not as thick as a porter, I would think. Um. Yeah, it's not as bad. I can still taste it. It's got a lot of vanilla. Yeah. Actually, now that I'm like licking my palate or whatever the fuck you want to call it, I can taste a lot of vanilla. Um, Yeah. It's not, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought I'd, I'd not be able to finish it because it's overly like sickening sweet. It's interesting. Yeah, but I, I've never had a beer like it before. Um, It's not something you would drink a lot of, I don't think. Like on a like warm summer day, sitting out. By Unless the it was free. <laughs> <laughs> Good point there. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, very weak taste for a porter, I think. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's not a golfing beer. Yeah, it's not a golfing beer where you're playing Metallica, you know, almost, exactly. almost tipping over. What were we golf having? Car. We were having the 64... What were they? Uh, Miller 64s. Miller 64s. <laughs> yeah. That's a great golfing beer. Yes, it is, because it's a very it was, light beer. It was hot out, and I didn't get wasted, but I was hydrated. Yeah. I didn't need to carry water around. Yeah, exactly. Because I had water in my beer bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Just pretty much, that's what it is. <laughs> I know, it is a great golfing beer, but... Well, it's, um, it's like having uh, sex in a canoe. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking close to water. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if anyone remembers Ashley, the neighbor, she was our other golfing partner. So it was me, Kevin, and She's Ashley. She's a good golfer. Yeah, our other one uh, couldn't make it. So it was just us three. Uh, me and Kevin are drinking. Uh, she has one of those little um, Bluetooth speakers. So we're No, like, that was mine. Oh, that was, yeah, that's right. It was yours. So we're blaring Metallica. <laughs> like, going, like, dun, 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 <laughs> just cruising, almost tipping the golf cart over, and... This guy's like, hey, can you guys hurry up a little bit? Yeah, we were holding everyone up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it didn't help that I took us on a half-hour detour trying to find the first tee-off yeah, point. Yeah, no, right when, we're, right when we're teeing off, I'm like, where in the fuck I'm are like, you going? I'm like, oh, we're lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took us a good half an hour, 45 minutes to find the first hole. That's what she said. But anyways, <laughs> um, back to the... <clears throat> oh, man, <clears throat> that's some more. Woo. Have some more. Yeah. <laughs> back to the beer. Um, if I would rate this, I would give it, uh, like I said, it's not a drink a lot beer. It's, it's basically for after dinner. Like if you go out for a fancy meal or something like that, I'd say, you know, drink Kevin's looking at porn, but anyways, <laughs> yeah. um, I would say I would give it, uh, three and a half uncooked microwavable dinners out of five. How about that? <laughs> uncooked microwavable <laughs> uncooked microwavable dinner that's a new scale for me so <laughs> I've tried I've been trying to conceptualize that um I <laughs> boy <laughs> you stumped me on that one yeah that's that's, that's uh, yeah. uh I I would you know what it's it's an interesting beer I I don't mind it mm -hmm. it's not something I would necessarily seek out again yeah i know like I, w I wouldn't look for it it'd be interesting to let someone like ron hey ron try yeah, this yeah yeah yeah. and he'd drink one and then that'd be it he'd, yeah. never, he'd never have another but he like 
That's interesting. Yeah, it's it's something that's interesting. Like I don't know, do people beer do beer tasting parties? Probably. Well, yeah. <laughs> we are right now. Yeah, <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> get the cheese platter. <laughs> and the yeah, where's next more where's the charcuterie platter for? To, I need to cleanse my palate between sips. <laughs> what the fuck is a shark? What did you call it? Charcuterie. Yeah, for people that don't know, the viewers out there, Kevin is a cook. Has been his whole life. He went to actually CIA. Uh, Culinary Institute of America. Yeah, uh, <laughs> where he's not told... not not the s- Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> yeah, he's not the CIA. I, the intelligence part would that was where I failed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's 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 seen some shit. And for anyone that doesn't know, being a chef is, I wouldn't say yeah, I'd say hard work, but it's just extremely fast paced and fucking depressing. hard work. Yeah, <laughs> it's depressing. If you, if you say it's not hard work. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to be nuts. <laughs> I, I like that part of it, though. Like, I've been well, on Coke for I, a long time, and I, I like the part of it, but it's just, it's very, I'd say it's a very, I wouldn't say degrading, but just depressing lifestyle. I miss it because uh, of the rush, like, at the end of the oh, night, yeah. where mm-hmm. you would just be like, what the fuck just happened mm-hmm. in the last three hours? Because it seemed like 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And then you just sit down, and you're like, and everyone else is like, yeah, what the fuck just happened when you get hit? Yeah. Because it's and, the most adrenaline, like one of the most adrenaline I've ever felt is when you're it, on you, a line, you get your ass fucked oh, all night, you take go it, home. Look, you and I had this conversation. Now, now I, I missed it for quite a while mm-hmm. after I, I got hurt yeah. and and some back and neck surgeries. AIDS. So it took me an AIDS. <laughs> the but, second time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, glad I got rid of that the third time. But uh, I don't want to get that again. But uh, it, uh, I missed it. For a few years mm-hmm. after I was taken out of the game, but now I think about it and I'm like, no way would I <laughs> like if they just made my body perfect yeah. again, uh-huh. like it always was. <laughs> <laughs> I I would be like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, um, yeah, like I I would, you know, the, the one place I worked at where we were very busy, uh, we'd get our ass fucked the whole night, and you'd be so amped up. You, you know, you'd have some beers after work or something like that, you know, the fucking... The con- you had to calm down. Yeah, to calm down. It was a three-hour decompression. Yeah. Because I wouldn't go to sleep I know. You'd go home, you'd one be up or two. till six in the morning with your eyes wide open, and you'd be like, I've seen some shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I, I don't know, like working... Anyone that works in the kitchen will completely understand this. You have a bunch of people stuck in a... Well, the kitchen I worked in, at least, was very small. So you have all these people stuck in a kitchen going like this, you know, at the speed, uh, as fast as you can. Oh, my God. People get a little crazy. (laughs) A little. Yeah. Shit throwing. The the fact that it attracts, like, the loonies of the world into the industry makes it it that much worse. (laughs) Anyone that works in a kitchen usually has some gears missing. (laughs) (laughs) Or at least ground. (laughs) Yeah. And it's usually, you know, uh, most of them. (laughs) Yeah. I, I've seen some You definitely shit. meet some characters. Yeah. I don't know if uh, me and Jay have ever talked about this. But we Jay just, and I. Oh, my God. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> Today. Today. <laughs> yeah, it's only noon. <laughs> yeah, this is like the fourth time he heard it. Well, uh, we were talking about one time this. We had this new guy, and he was on Friars, and he just disappeared. And, you know, we went and looked for him, and he's up in the hallway with beer batter in his hair going, I can't do it, man. <laughs> I would have put him in the Friar. <laughs> Dunk that head in the Friar with yeah. the beer batter on it. Because we only had three fryers, and uh, I forget how much the, the restaurant sat, but once you got 10, 11 fish and chips, you were fucked. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, because, you know, you only could probably fit, you know, I'd say two. Three orders? Yeah, three, maybe. Yeah, probably three. And then, and then we used to have these blooming onions. <laughs> oh, those are such a pain in the ass. They are such a pain in the ass. And if you ever seen, like, the Outback commercials, like, hey, mate, you know. <laughs> They um, ruin the fryers. Yeah, too. I know they ruin the fryers. There's these huge things. Fryer oil goes. You to have shit. to dip them in, and you have to be careful, or they'll break. And then just the fryers go to shit because all the beer batters go. And then you have to peel it apart, make sure it's all right. Then you have to take this little thing, cut out the middle, so you can put the ranch in the. Oh, it's just fucking. At least they're healthy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I forget. I, I said the Outback menu. Now I've eaten at Outback twice, and both times were exceptionally poor. Um, <laughs> well, you got a mass produced food chain, of course. Yeah, well, well, here's okay. So I drove down to Florida in November, and we were stuck. We made it down from Williamsport to 
close to the border of South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Like we got hung up in Washington D.C. for a long time in traffic. So my friend I was with was like, "Well, where are we gonna go eat?" And I found a sushi place. She's like, "Oh, give me shit." Because we're right off I-95. Yeah. And she's like, well, what kind of sushi is going to be off I-95? I'm like, probably the freshest because it's a pretty major <laughs> yeah. corridor. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, yeah, it's sort of near she, the ocean. But she, Yeah, exactly. And she, Yeah, we were t- 10 miles from the Because I always hear, I'm not a big sushi, but I always hear, <laughs> don't eat sushi that's not clear to, not, you know, close to an ocean. Well, you know, I mean, we have airplanes these days. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could, you know, it doesn't take long to get the fish to you. You're such but, a uh, fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty new invention, but we have them. <laughs> and, uh, but so she finally decided that we're going to go to the Outback. So I order a steak, uh, a filet, mm-hmm. medium rare. Yeah, that's how I eat my steak. Okay, now this is a place. It's the Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> so what these guys do in the kitchen is cook steaks. <laughs> and this thing came out fucking as raw as the day it was butchered. <laughs> it just had some color on the outside. And I sent it, and, and my friend, she ordered hers like medium, mm-hmm. and hers was rare. Jesus mine was Christ. raw. We both sent them back. And you would have thought they'd replace it, but mine came back. It was the same fucking steak. <laughs> you know? And and the thing was, it, it you know, when you get a filet, usually, you know, it's, it's probably about like, you know, a couple oh, inches yeah. tall. Oh, yeah. This was like maybe an inch at the best. Maybe three yeah, quarters. Probably of got it in a fucking cryovac fucking. Oh, you know, absolutely. Just like that. Well, you know yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. They don't cut their own steaks. Yeah, fuck that. It's a chain. Yeah, exactly. But uh, boy, what a bad meal. <laughs> and then, and so, but the first time I ever went was was another drive down to Florida, and I was driving down to Tampa, and I was hungry, and I stopped in Ocala. I was just tired. I was like, it's only like another two hours to Tampa, but I was just too tired. Mm-hmm. And I was going to fall asleep at the wheel. So I got a hotel and I said, where's a place to eat? And they said, Outback Steakhouse. You're like, fuck. So I went, well, I'd never, try, I'd never been there. Oh, this was the first time. This was time the first time. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, the, the, yeah. November was the second time. So that's why I was like, ah, let's not go to the Outback. And she insisted. So we went. But uh, so they have this policy, which I didn't know. So I'm alone and I go to the Outback because it's the only place close. Yeah. And I'm like, I want a steak and a beer. And the waitress comes over and sits down at the seat right across from me and starts talking to me. And I'm, I was just like, it was the first time that ever happened to me. Yeah. And for and, coming from something like CIA or something, that's a big no-no. It's just weird. Yeah, yeah. it's a big no-no. Yeah. You don't sit down at your customer's no, table. No. <laughs> but, but apparently, that is Outback's policy. Oh. I, I looked it up because I was just so taken aback. Now, it wasn't like... She was mean. Or, yeah, exactly. It was just it like, just whoa, this guard. is weird. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, especially being from something like CIA. Where it's it's, it's like, the only time I've ever had. I mean, yeah. no one at Burger King's done it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a high class meal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they brought me my food because there's a long wait. But, you know. But uh, so she sat down. But they, they, did, they did studies. And it turns out that the wait staff get higher tips. Oh. Because it's like a more personal interaction. See, not me. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what? And, <laughs> but I realized, you know what? I realized when I left, or after I looked it up, like why they do that, I was like, you know what? I did. I gave her a higher tip than I probably would have normally. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it was still a shitty meal. Did she have big titties? <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember sitting like, down. like she sat down, she'd be like, hey. <laughs> yeah. <And> then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> interesting. The only hoot, the only Hooters I've ever been to was the original one, Clearwater. I was down in Clearwater. That's funny how that and, reminds you of Hooters. <laughs> yeah, well, because you said big titties. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and and I big titties and I, <laughs> big titties and I, yes, big titties and I are good friends. But uh, yeah. So anyway, I just the Hooters thing. I went to the original one in Clearwater, and that's the only one I've been to. But you know, good wings, good. Breasts. <laughs> <laughs> good thighs. <laughs> yeah, good thighs. I go there for the wings, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, you go there for the food. Absolutely. <laughs> Any other horror stories you remember from being in the kitchen or anything like that or restaurant thing? Oh, my gosh. Uh, There's probably so many. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're way too... 23 years or whatever. <laughs> yeah. There are uh, quite a few. Um. <clears throat> The one thing I have noticed since I've been out of kitchens is, like, when I was working in kitchens, 
and then I'd go, you're just, no wonder all, all these chefs die young. You hear yeah. of all these famous chefs dying yeah. young. Right? Uh -huh. um, I would like get in a line at the grocery store, like Wegmans, mm -hmm. and people would be like, oh, I'm sorry, I signed the check wrong. And my blood pressure, <laughs> like, cause, just because time is so important. Value. Yeah, exactly. It's so important. Yeah, exactly. You've got to move. you got to move. you got to move. And, in your whole life cycle. And I, you become, yeah. Like I told you one time, for it was, I don't have them anymore, but for mm. years, I had the nightmares of the ticket going tick, 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 yep. tick, 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 tick. I would hear it in my sleep. Yep. I would, I would have nightmares. Yep. And, I'd be walking down the street here and I'd be like, <laughs> every time, every time that, that the ticket started piling in, like when it wouldn't stop. I know. You know? Exactly. Like now it's, it, it's seven o'clock <laughs> and it just won't shut the fuck up. Yeah. But we had one time where it was printing off and we kept ripping them and putting them up. We ran out of room, so it was just folding itself onto the ground. Yeah. And we're like, what the What fuck? do we do? Yeah. yeah. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> How do we keep up with this? <laughs> but, that's, but that's the thing. I'd be at a convenience store, and some fucking old cunt would be sitting there playing lottery tickets. You know what I mean? She'd win. She'd come back and go and get more and stuff like that. And I'm just like. Well, that's annoying <laughs> in general, but when you're in a kitchen, it's that much. You know, when you're working in a kitchen, it's that much worse. But my whole life, working in a kitchen. I would say was my real first job. I did have another job. I think my first job was being a dry cleaner. A blow job. Yeah, exactly. Blow job and I. But, <laughs> but no, that would be blow job and me. <laughs> but my first real job was, uh, you know, that I'd say that was hard, was working on the line in the kitchen. And it, it's definitely affected who I am and what kind of person I turned into the older I got. It's made me very, very hyperactive very hyperactive i can never calm down ever see i've mellowed out yeah but i haven't <laughs> you, you, well you remember me i'm still in the business though you are yes you are yes but i mean i remember you when you first met me i was I, i'm sure you've seen a change in me over the years just the AIDS calming got down. the age got better well yeah that helped <laughs> but i've calmed down yeah 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 i mean i can i can you know, people can give me shit, and I'm like, I just let it roll off my back, whatever. <laughs> you know, it doesn't bother me. Like, whatever. Yeah. Fuck you know me. what? Fuck you. That's, yeah, what, exactly. that's why I am. People give me shit. I'm like, you don't live my life. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> just go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'd say, and the thing is, is like, I still work in it. I work in the front of the house now, which is completely completely different. It's, it's stressful, too, though. It, it, it's more stressful, in my opinion, because... In a kitchen, the only thing that's really going to slow you down is yourself. And you can hide. Yeah. Out front, the customers slow you down. And it sucks. You can be the best worker. You could be the best at what you do out there. But if a customer is giving you problems or asking you tons of questions that make no fucking sense, <laughs> like, like it, it just slow Like, you know. Do you I, have any gluten-free sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure. We'll just you yeah. know go back to the vending machine. We have this as gluten free. <laughs> I had a whole table like that. The whole six top was gluten free. Oh, and I was like, they must have just got on a fucking Instagram because they're all fucking lying. I know. One percent of the population has still, <laughs> has uh, intolerance to gluten. I know, and that's why I was like, oh, I got the whole one percent of the world. So that's three <laughs> three three point two million people in this country have celiac disease yeah, it's, it's but like, they'll they'll they just not, the gluten-free thing is huge and the companies are making a fortune off of it oh yeah of course because everyone's like gluten is bad gluten's bad gluten's yeah. bad well you know what it's, it's everything a, it's, a, it's a protein yeah everything in america is bad for you our food is fucking horrible well <laughs> not my food <laughs> yes. mm. <laughs> hey and um at the restaurant i work out right now we have this huge thing where uh we have gator bites and it's alligator. And um, no uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Every table. What's gator bites? I'm not even joking. Every table. What's gator bites? And the only thing, it's alligator. Like, what else can you say to that? <laughs> like, yeah. you, you want to choke the fuck out of them. It's made of cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every fucking table. What, what's gator bites? It's like, what the fuck do you think it is, man? <laughs> like, it's made out of croc shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, they just, I, I, I just don't get it, man. I just don't get it. People are just, I don't know if they want excitement when they come to a restaurant or what's going on. But well, it's just... there are certain people that, now I've worked front of the house as well, mm -hmm. and there are certain types of people 
that go out to eat just to bitch. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's like their entertainment. Oh yeah, exactly. Is we're going to go out and we're going to complain about everything. Mm. We're going to send everything back. Yep. And they will and they 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 get really good at it mm. in confusing you with the orders. Yep. Like we want the blah 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 blah, and if it doesn't all come in the and it's like Jesus, you're like writing it down, yeah, you're writing it down as fast as you can, and and then as soon as something comes out at the wrong time, they start. Oh, I have one. I'm not even gonna go into it because I could spend an hour the whole rest of the podcast on it. But it, we're in front of the house at the Escoffier room at the CIA, and this this group of eight came in and it was the busiest night that restaurant had ever had oh, of course of course <laughs> it, it was <laughs> and, and that rest that restaurant had been open for 30 years yeah at least yeah and so the mater d who was also the instructor great guy bernard martinage he runs he runs his own Madonna. bernard martinage <laughs> he, he name, was he was french <laughs> he was from france that name sort of makes me horny <laughs> he was great yeah, Ver- yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he there were there were people going like the other restaurant was busy you know the, across the hall was busy as well and he was recruiting people to come in he just wanted to set the record mm-hmm. and we set the record and did he have a thick accent oh yeah so he was very French. <laughs> very French. Did, did you ever have a trouble hearing him or anything? No, no. Uh, he was, his English was pretty good. Oh, okay. Because I'd be like, what the? But it was fuck definitely are you accident, say? especially in a rush. One of the great, <laughs> one of the greatest instructors I ever had. I mean, he was incredible. Oh, okay. He actually moved to Florida and opened his own consulting firm. Like he runs a school where he teaches people how to mm-hmm. do weight. You know, yeah. be a mater d. I mean, he had worked in you know major restaurants in New York City, and you know, he probably made. Hundred seventy five, two hundred thousand dollars a year, Jesus. being a maitre d in some of these restaurants, and Jesus. then he kept CIA. And was it, just one of the best instructors I ever had. But, mm. but yeah, he pulled in all these people. I mean, it was a freaking zoo. And this isn't like you know people order an app. It was like you know a six course meal, six course meal, yep, salads, and, everything, and yep. and we had to put if they ordered a fish dish we had to put a fish knife down oh and a fish fork i mean Ugh. and at, in between every course all the table all the tableware was reset yeah taken yep. off reset yeah you reset for every for every, every course. course yeah, yeah. Oh, i mean it was God. it was hardcore oh, busy and we we're and it was like my friend brian and i had three tables and one of them was eight and I, it was just incredible it, you know it was just <laughs> like i went I, they sent this one table sent back a dish and I just I went in, and Bernard was out in the kitchen. I just threw it back, and he goes, "Calm down, calm down, get it together, get it together." Because he He's saw, like he it. saw I was losing my shit. Yeah, dude, it's like a fucking war zone. And then, man. like the next day, like we went in for the, the class before we go back into the kitchen, and he's like, "Yeah, so Kevin and Brian had pretty much the worst table I've ever seen." <laughs> And I was like, copy that. <laughs> yeah, just some like something, and it puts you in such a bad mood because, like, I don't know about you, but I'm a very thankful person, you know, whatever. And it's just when I see people complain about small, stupid shit, it just makes you go insane. Like, it's just, and it's like a majority of waitresses I know, or anyone waiters, waitresses that work in the front of a house, are fucking crazy. <laughs> it's like the it's like the kitchen people in the back. It's. Anyone that works in a restaurant has this crazy just and, – and the funny thing is, is being a bartender now, when someone comes in and I'm waiting on them, I can tell they work in the restaurant industry. It's very eerie. Oh, you well, when I first met you, I had never told you. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you knew me for a little while. Yeah. But I never said, like, yeah, I cooked and mm-hmm. any of that. I remember and then that. It, and then at one point, you're like – I knew it. I knew you worked in restaurants. Yeah. You, you said, I can just tell. <laughs> yeah, because you said some kind of joke or something like that. And I was like, with a joke like that, it's like you've worked in the restaurant. Bit. And you're like, well, I have. <laughs> because I just, I don't know. People that work in restaurants are just insane. <laughs> insane in the membrane. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just, I don't know. I get this feeling. Of it just, makes you insane. Yeah. Like, I remember this one woman. You can be totally sane till you start in the industry, <laughs> yeah. and then you come out a nut. Like, I don't recommend it, like, to anybody, because it, it, I feel like it's mentally and physically has changed my life and made me who I am. Like, I, I remember one time I was sitting there, and this woman came in, and she's just sitting there, she, and she's just like, she can't keep still. 
still, she's sitting there playing with the straws on the bar and everything like that. And I'm like, she has to be a waiter, waitress or something. I she's wigging tell. out. Yeah, I can just tell. And then I heard her talking about work, about, uh, oh, Jesus, uh, <laughs> with her friend or whatever that she was with about waiting tables and stuff like that. And I just, it's 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 eerie. It's very eerie that I can tell that, you know, and you, you probably can too sometimes. You just see these people and yeah. you're like. It's like an aura of just like craziness floating well, up. Yeah, once, once, <laughs> once you realize they're nuts, you're like, "There's probably a good chance they work in the restaurant <laughs> yeah, industry, yeah. in the food industry." <laughs> well, I remember. Uh, I think it was last year. I think it was Time Magazine or something did the uh, top 200 most depressing, um, unrewarding jobs, and kitchen cook was, I think, number like six. Yeah, if if not higher. Yeah, it it, was, it probably was, and uh. uh it was actually funny because everything like, on that top 200 maybe list the, the, was working in a kitchen. Waitress. The guy who pulls a switch on the electrocutioner on the electrocution <laughs> was, was one below. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that was a good pull on the switch there. Yeah, hey, good job. Yeah, see you Monday. Yeah, he burned a little bit, but, you know, we maybe we should have forgot. We, we should have put the uh, sponge up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every the, uh, the smell was bad. <laughs> every everyone on that list, there was something from a restaurant. There was line cook, there was head chef, there was waiter waitress, um, there was hostess. There was a bunch of shit on there. Yeah, it was it was just insane. Actually, I think the first one was lumberjack or something. <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, there are some, there are some pretty good jobs out there. Like I've never eaten at a cheesecake factory. Mm-hmm. You've heard of the cheesecake factory? Yeah, I actually did for the first time when I went to California. It wasn't that bad. I've heard they're not bad. But it didn't it, taste it, mass produced. If you're a manager mm-hmm. at a cheesecake factory, you make like a hundred fifty thousand a year, and you get a corporate BMW. Holy they give, fuck! They give you a BMW. <laughs> you're like, That's what you drive is a BMW. Jesus, man. So there are some good, you know. Yeah. I mean, there it was really good because. But they're stressed out too. Oh yeah, of course they are. That's why they give them a BMW. Yeah, they're probably work, they're probably working sixty seven <laughs> oh, hours yeah. a week. And, and that's the other thing is the hours. Yeah, and they're probably on salary. So yo, they're salary. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. no matter how many hours you work that week, you get paid the same. Yep. yep. But but in the and you know the positive end, there uh, say you miss a week or you call off sick or something like that or something happens, you still get paid that much. Yeah, which is good. But uh, so I got offered salary once in my life, and I just couldn't do it because. But full benefits as well. Yeah. Which is, you get full benefits. Mm-hmm. They say that's worth like an extra nine, ten bucks an hour. Oh yeah, probably, definitely. It's you know? hard to get benefits these days. And, well, and, in the restaurant industry, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and, I mean it's rare. Yeah, and even with like uh, I see a lot of companies around here like my, they can't afford it. Yeah, my nephew, he he just got a job at Best Buy, and uh, you know a lot of people get benefits when they do full time. Well, they do. They label them part time, but they do like thirty thirty two hours, yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. Anything, so they, yeah. like anything under thirty seven is considered part time. Yeah. But I don't blame, like you said, they can't afford it. I went to the mall yesterday for the first time. It's like a ghost town in there. Um, uh, like the actual in the mall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't for, been in there in for years. For the first time in a while, there's stores. All stores are closed down. There's empty things. Everything like uh, it's just the carousels running. It's playing that creepy music. Amazon's beating their <laughs> yeah, ass. Yeah, I know, dude. But it was weird because it was like I was the only person like in that area walking. The carousels like playing. No one's riding. It's like dee, 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 dee. and like what? stores have their gates closed because they're like bankrupt or whatever. And I'm just like, what the fuck is the, this? The thing, the thing about the mall now. Our local mall. That was a huge thing when it opened. Oh yeah, because uh, that was about it. But it put a lot of downtown businesses out of business. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, but but the thing was, I, like, I would walk in, and there'd be a hair salon across from the Arby's. So you're getting like this Arby's smell, and then this like chemical smell from <laughs> someone getting a perm and it just i'd walk around and the air just wasn't filtered or rotate it just i would you, i'd be nauseous that literally nauseous me. that happens to me especially if i don't go to the mall for a long time i get really sick from the smells yeah that happened to me well i think it's bad air yeah and i was walking through and my eyes were swelling up and my mom's like are you okay and i'm like i don't know i don't feel good She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I just don't like the way this place smells. I get sick in the mall. Yeah, that's Literally. Crazy. That happened to me. Physically <laughs> ill. Yeah. Because I was like, um, for some reason, I don't know what they put on clothing, but they put this smell on clothing. 
And I was walking through it. It was next to Friendly's. I forget what's next to Friendly's. I think it's like a J.C. Penny or something. Sears. Yeah. And I was getting that smell of Friendly's and then the smell of the chemicals or something they put on clothing. Yeah. And I just got sick. My eyes started swelling. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't know. I feel sick to my stomach. Yeah, it's bad. And I ha- and that was the first time I haven't been to the mall in like three or four years. Yeah, I don't go. Yeah, I just was like, what the? F-? That's funny you say that because that happened to me. I was like... Am I a bubble boy? <laughs> we should all be bubble boys. Yeah, exactly. It was it was just fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> what is that headline on the computer? Oh, this is uh yeah, this is a story I wanted to talk about, actually. Um I'll give you a little picture of here. Uh this is what she looks like. Italian actress uh makes good on blowjobs promising to uh, God damn, I hate OBS. <laughs> So basically, PMS. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, this Italian actress, I've never seen her before. I don't know who the fuck she is. Does she look familiar? She's to eating you? a cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I worked at restaurants. That's yeah, a cannoli. That's a cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so basically, they had an election over there, I guess. And uh, she really hated the one candidate, really loved the, the other one. Sounds familiar. <laughs> I was going to say, apparently we had an election yeah. recently, too. Yeah, that were the same thing. There was some sort of division <laughs> Division occurred. <laughs> um, like I said, I've never seen this girl before. But basically, she offered to give anyone a blowjob that didn't vote for the person. I didn't vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't live in Italy, but fuck it. So, and basically... Uh, the Look at she... that cannoli. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that poor thing. It's the luckiest cannoli in the world. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a cannoli all over your face. <laughs> but anyway, Keep it clean. Keep yeah. it clean. <laughs> Sorry, there's, there's kids watching. There's kids watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, she says this, and then on her Instagram, she just posts po- pictures like this, promoting that she will give a blowjob. She does the cannoli thing. There's other pictures. Uh, that's her... Um, yeah, I'd fuck her, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then she did a bunch of promotions with her sucking on lollipops and everything. Is that because she has a heartbeat? <laughs> I heard that doesn't really matter with you. <laughs> Where'd you hear that? <laughs> well, I think it was the other night when you said, I'd fuck anything with two tits, a hole, and a heartbeat, but the heartbeat's optional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> so, yeah, um... I can't read fucking Italian, so I have no idea what that says. I'll that, read it for you. That looks like, you know, Fabrario. It's molto bene. Calamari. That looks like February. I don't know. Jeez, I hope nobody I know watches this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, tell your mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, what's a podcast? So you're going to be on the radio? <laughs> yeah, he he told his mom today. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be on a podcast. She's like, what's that? It, it took him by like, yeah, like half like, an hour. Yeah, I was like, internet radio. Oh, you're going to be on the radio? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the internet. So so, so basically, uh, what ended up happening with this is she did give... Echo of nueve de del mi pompator. Yeah, no problem. You just gotta put yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lettuce tomato. <laughs> Lettuce tomato. <laughs> so basically, Mozzarella. from what I uh, read here, the person did end up winning that she wanted. So everyone that didn't vote for her, for what's the candidate, name? yeah, whatever, has to. She's gonna be busy. Uh, yeah. Well, she already said that. She says she has about a mil- million blow shots. To give. <laughs> that's. She says that's, she's going to do every single That's going to be a world record, I think. That's what she said. She's going to set the world record for the most pro jobs. I don't think you can do that. Well, it's not at the same time. <laughs> well, I understand that. I, I just think she'll be in her 70s by the time, you know, number 700,000 gets up. And he'll be like, hey, I passed. <laughs> Like, let me take my arthritis medicine. (laughs) My arthritis medicine. I had to have my jaw replaced twice. (laughs) Well, that's the thing. She already gave... um, Everyone AIDS? (laughs) Italian AIDS. Uh, I don't know if it says here, but... um, I forget what it says, but she already gave a certain amount already. She's already started, actually. Um, But I can't remember where I read that at. There was a bunch of articles about it. Um, She gave a bunch already. Uh, she has a lot more to do, and she says she has about over a million to do. And she, <coughs> Jesus okay. Christ, she plans to fulfill every single one. Are you like 
clearing your calendar. I'm get <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So, get, so a million. Yeah. So, how many minutes would you think it would take? For a com- <laughs> let's, let, how let's much say jerk off. let's say she's super hot and she has a fluffer. <laughs> a fluffer. We're adding the fluffer so, in. So there. is there a fluffer so, button on that calculator? Bu- <laughs> so, so say let's say two minutes. All right. At best. Yeah. Okay. So two. <laughs> so that's two million minutes. Uh huh. So I wish I had my. Amazon Echo here. I could ask. <laughs> I know you could just ask. I'd, I'd be like, hey. Was, okay. Okay. What's two million minutes? <laughs> 20,000. Two million divided by 60. That's 33,333 minutes. <laughs> so that's a lot of minutes. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Man. I don't think she can do it. I don't think she can either. I mean, even a full time, ten hours a day. And that's the thing. She looks pretty good right now, but when she gets older, Her I think cheeks are going to be out. Yeah, there. and I think the two minutes is going to last a little long because it's going to be look like you're fucking a raisin. <laughs> Have you ever fucked a raisin? <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I was very lonely, <laughs> and all the hookers were busy. <laughs> Plus, your dick would fit in a raisin anyway. <laughs> yeah, it fit in my pee hole. That's about it. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, she she plans on breaking the record for the most blowjobs ever given. Apparently, but she's only given. She's not even given like a hundred yet or something. She's always complaining. She's got a lot of work yeah, ahead of her. She's even complaining about lockjaw and all this shit. And she's uh. not even at like a hundred yet. I guess. <laughs> So I just I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's gonna make that. No, I don't either. I don't at all. But I'd still fuck her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> either no, you could probably you know twirl a cane in that. <laughs> Hello, my baby. All right, I, I'm not even touching that. <laughs> <laughs> Italian AIDS is hard to get rid of. <laughs> it tastes like gnocchi, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving right along. Uh, there's an article. Where so this beer is not good. No, once you get to the end of it, yeah, you're like fuck my life. <laughs> not that bad, but I got another. I got I got beer behind me that I'm I'm gonna open. Okay, do you have a, beer, a bottle to, opener? Cause... Yeah, I brought my own bottle opener. <laughs> what? <Whoa. laughs> hey, don't, don't you fucking dare! <laughs> don't you even fucking dare! Sparks you fly! <laughs> don't you even dare, you motherfucker! <laughs> what what beer did you bring with you? My standard. Your sta- Why is it your standard beer? What do you like about it? It's an IPA, and I'm a, kind of an IPA guy. Yeah. Even though people are saying IPAs have been ruining the beer world. I think that's because of hipsters. Yeah, well, hipsters drink Pabst Blue Ribbon. <laughs> so... So, they're not... You know, that's not an IPA. That's but you know what? It, it, it did win a, a an award. Or a, a ribbon. Yeah, 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 it won a ribbon, so it can't be that bad. In 1901. Yeah, 1901. If it won a ribbon, you know, I mean, it's you know an award-winning beer. <laughs> so, what is it that you like about this beer, basically? I like the bitterness. Mm-hmm. Um, How do you pronounce that? Lagunitas. 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 Uh, they have a few beers, and I like pretty much all of them. This mm-hmm. is. One of my favorites that they make is that. Would you say that's your favorite type of beer? Is an IPA? Yes. No. Oh. Yes. Definitely an IPA guy. Uh, probably my favorite beer in the world is Sam Smith's Oatmeal Stout. Ugh. But that's that's like a dessert beer. Have uh, you ever that... have you ever had it? No. You would like it. Really? It's very expensive. Then but... I wouldn't like it. <laughs> If it was free, you would. I am not the royalty. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy a four pack because it comes in four packs. Oh, of course it does. Because <laughs> if it was a six pack, everyone would be like, I'm not paying that much money. <laughs> I was going to say, if it comes in a four pack, it's probably fucking expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. But uh, it's definitely not something you would drink. It's not a golf beer. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's just a real hearty. Mm-hmm. And like, you know. Like a porter and a stout are sort of close. Yeah. Stouts are generally a little heavier. Yeah, a little heavier, yeah. But, uh, you know, but Guinness is a stout, uh-huh. and that's... that's. See, and I think for a stout, Guinness is very, very light. 
I think it's very it is. thin. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's very thin. It's, it has body to it, but it's it's low in alcohol. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gives good head or has has good head. <laughs> is it an Italian? <laughs> no, it's not Italian. I'm I'm salami, g- I want the Guinness and the Carpaccio. <laughs> Fucking Mario. Mario, <laughs> Mario Fatali. <laughs> I actually went and ate at his restaurant, Babo, when it first opened. Really? That was his first restaurant. Babo. Before he was, before he, he got huge, and now he has like 40,000 restaurants. <laughs> fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to be a chef, that's the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But that's you the know. thing. He's probably put his time in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, people bitch about Emerald Goss and stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, you can bitch about him all you want, but, you know, when he's flying his private jet with his yeah, assistant exactly. to one of his restaurants. And you can tell he's crazy. Like with the BAM thing. <laughs> yeah, it's just a signature. I know, but you know where that probably came from? Because he was probably going to shoot his fucking, you know, blow his brains out every night coming home from work. Bam! <laughs> Bam! <laughs> He's like, that's a good three, Mark. Hey, blah, 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 blah. But I'll tell you, it, it, if you achieve that status of success uh-huh. as a chef, mm. you know, I, he probably jumps behind the line at one of his restaurants three times a year. Yeah, exactly. Just to be like, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Playing. Yeah. The rest of the time, he's going out doing public appearances. Yeah. Yep. He's flying around. He has his own private jet. Yep. He makes he makes I think seven or eight million a year. Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> at least that. And Mario's making that, but you know, everyone, everyone, you know, the Food Network got that going, and then everyone. That's why the chef thing like really took off. Yeah. Uh-huh. And and the Food Network, like the first time I ever saw it was. Uh, when I first went to CIA, I didn't have housing. And I had started, they do like three, three week blocks. And then they were in the, in the summer, they shut down for a month to redo all the equipment, get everything, you know, Mm -hmm. cleaned up. So you get a month off. So it was cheaper for me to drive up and stay in a hotel. That was like, it was like a cheap hotel, not bad, but it was like 35 bucks a night. Yeah. And I stayed like there. one stain on the, you know, yeah. bed, not three. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you didn't find many dead people in the door next, you know, the room next to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, wasn't bad. Village Square Motel in, in Hyde Park, New York. There's there's a promo. <laughs> I hope they send me some money for that. <laughs> the 35 bucks for one night. <laughs> but uh, I stayed there, and then I'd drive back to Williamsport and stay at my parents yeah. during the weekend. But uh, that was my first introduction. The Food Network had just started, and they had it, and I had never heard of it. And that's where I first ran in Amaral. Oh, or, you or met saw, him? Saw, yeah, he was. Yeah, he he came up, did a book signing. He didn't come to CIA because he went to Johnson and Wales. But he came and did a book signing in Poughkeepsie. Oh, okay. And I went down, and I didn't actually buy the book. I just went down to see him. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I buy. But your he's shit. actually pretty. Cool. I, a friend of mine who went to CIA worked for him in New Orleans for a while mm-hmm. at his first restaurant. Um, anyway, the point is, it, it, the Food Network got people really into like, hey, I'm gonna. Be, a be, chef. be Emerald. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna exactly. be on TV and fly exactly. all over the place. Yeah, and, and it's not that. Yeah, I guess you you want in. A million. Yeah, it's get not that. that easy. Yeah, yeah. And Ron, uh, for the people that know Ron from last um, last episode, he works in restaurants and he complains about that a lot. He's like, everyone watches Food Network and thinks they can be a fucking chef, and that's not just how it works. <laughs> yeah. You have to put your time in. You have to. I I don't know. You just have to work your ass off, and it sucks. And like, yeah, but you know what? You can still put all the time in you want, and it's you're you're probably not going to make it. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's very, very, very fucking hard to do. <laughs> I mean, all these guys that are you know on TV have great personalities, yeah, exactly, and, and they've they they could be TV stars on their own. Mm-hmm. You're know, like Rachel Ray. Yeah, I'd fuck um, her. She, she makes a lot of money. <laughs> her husband would probably be pissed, but. <laughs> um, and she'd probably call nine one one, but <laughs> that's why I use duct tape <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and lime and a deep pit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care. I think she's fucking cut hot. the cut the hands off. Take the teeth out. <laughs> well, it's like you've done this before, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I say that out loud? I thought I was just thinking that. Um, Jesus. But uh, yeah. Oh. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's his fucking gosh. beer, dude. 
Yeah, it's so gassy. Like, oh my god, that's not a good beer anymore. I know. I it, like, <laughs> and that's what I've been finding with a lot of like, oh, ale with artificial and natural flavors. <laughs> that the artificial part, that's a a dead giveaway. Yeah, why isn't it gluten free? I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah, have you ever had gluten free beer? It's no. terrible. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> the whole the whole idea of gluten free is fucking horrible. And if you come in a restaurant complaining about it, go fuck yourself. Go fuck no, but, yourself but I, and I. No, I do. I do. I, <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself and I. <laughs> I have a good friend who actually has celiac disease, mm-hmm. and it took years for her to be diagnosed with it because mm-hmm. she just had all these problems and and. Like she has to, if she goes out to a restaurant, she has to bring her own salad dressings. Yeah, because a lot of those have gluten, you know, mm-hmm. stuff in them. Um, but it's manageable. But but like she, you know, just doesn't drink beer anymore. Because that's how I found out gluten. Because I was like, can I try one of your gluten free beers? She's like, mm-hmm. yeah, they suck. And, I'm, and, I tr- and she tried them all. You know, just <laughs> yeah, to yeah, see if just they all just suck. No, so no. she just drinks wine. No. <laughs> <You know? laughs> How's the wine? The wine's gluten free. <laughs> Yeah, that that's that, that sucks, and, yeah. and that's the thing. Like, I just I, there is probably people, and it's with everything. Gosh, like, I would miss pizza so bad. Oh my god, yeah, I love pizza, dude. So do <laughs> a, good, a good pizza. Oh my god, like I would, and and that's the thing that sucks is is you know this whole gluten free a free thing comes out, and then people you know everyone thinks they have it or something, and it's just so ridiculous. It's like people say, oh, I have OCD, but, it, you know, they really don't have it. Sorry, like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> like the guy that, you know, has real OCD and just washes his hands to where his skin falls off. Like, people are just fucking retarded. I have OCD. Huh? I have OCD. Not as bad as where your skin falls off from washing your hands. No. That's what I'm saying. There's a difference. <laughs> but I have to, like, when I leave my house, like, I have to check my, make sure... I have my key. Like, I have to check. Your penis. My penis. Or, or, oh, sorry. <laughs> Keats is a key word for my penis. Okay. So whenever I say keys, I mean penis. Um, <clears throat> but I have to, like, check my keys, like, twice. Like, I'll feel them. They're in my pocket. Yeah. No. And then I don't... Tr- and then I'm going out the door, and out the door lock, and then I, I don't trust myself that I... Yeah. Four seconds ago. See, I don't think that's OCD. That. I think you're schizophrenic. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm just. I don't know. People. I don't know. What's that? What's that? Hypochondriac. I think a lot of people with the internet these days, they read something, they think they have it. They, or they get on WebMD and like, yeah. oh yeah, I have that symptom and that symptom and that symptom. Yeah. Like I know I have terminal cancer right now. <laughs> but, but it's like someone has you know their eyes swollen or something. They look up and they're like, oh, I have cancer. Or they go into the mall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Walk into the mall, you have everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just, just people are fucking weird, and, that, and that's why I have to like you know sometimes keep away from the internet every once in a while because people on there are just fucking insane. No, <laughs> if it's on the internet, it has to be true, right? <laughs> I know. How about it? that's a nice shirt you're wearing, by the way. Thank you. It's uh, <laughs> Bunghole Liquors in Peabody, Massachusetts. And and it's what, a real place. It's a real place. I actually have a, a picture of my two nephews when they were younger. In front of Bunghole Liquors, the sign. <laughs> How old were it's they? It's great. Oh, like, like ten and seven. <laughs> okay. Hey, why don't you? Go, you have no idea what the sign means, but yeah. just go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I wish I, I wish I had a copy of it. I post. We could post it on this. <laughs> it's pretty funny. My two nephews in front of the Bunghole Liquor store. <laughs> ten years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you said it was Massachusetts. Yes, and that's right. You look. Well, you... There... There's a. Oh yeah, yeah. It says it all the back. Peabody, they have two two locations. I don't know what the other one is. No, okay. ha- Haverhill or something. Maybe. That's right. You've lived in Boston for a while. I lived in Boston for six years. How was that? Loved Boston. Really? How yeah. many fights did you get? In? <laughs> I uh, heard Boston is quite crazy. a few. Yeah, it is nuts. Oh yeah, the fights. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like a lot of uh, a lot of Irish people up there. <laughs> a few, a one, few. One, one or two <laughs> one or two and but the thing is is i want to see how things go because massachusetts just legalized weed they did the other day so i want to know if there's going to be a you know graph or something to explain if fights went down or not. How, how did you know about about boston and the fights i've been to boston okay i um 
I was in this. I mean, it is. I, I've seen I more. Fuck, I've seen more freaking fights. Yes, Boston. I mean, it's is insane. Inc- it's incredible. Just, Everyone beats the shit out of each other. Fight, yeah, they just fight you. Yeah, whatever. Uh, there's actually. I I okay. used to be in a band and stuff like that, and we we did a lot of touring. Uh, we went to Boston one time, and the people are just different there. Um, where'd you play? Uh, Worcester. Oh, you're in Worcester. Worcester. Okay. Is that how you say it? Worcester? Worcester. Yes. It was on the 4th of July, and we went there, and just people are... It's a bad, so, bad, ugly town. Yeah. People are just so... They just want to fight you for everything. Yeah. Like, and and the type of music I listen to, I guess they call it hardcore. I just call every music, you know, metal or whatever like that. But you have this group of people, they call them, you know, they're called straight edge. They don't do drugs. They don't do alcohol. And it's very huge in Boston right now. Um, maybe you've seen it. They have X tattoos. I've never seen anything that doesn't involve alcohol in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I see it, and that's the thing. New to me. <laughs> and these people are very against alcohol. It's called straight edge. Um, a lot of X's means they don't do alcohol. A lot of them get to the point where they don't even have premarital sex. It, it's that crazy. But they'll 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 go. So it's to, called Mormonism. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll go into bars and like they wear. I, I remember the one guy I was talking to had a straight edge shirt on. It says, "Curb your local bartender." Because they, in their eyes, they think... Put them on the curb and yeah. break their jaw, yeah. like, and ma- or generate, or whatever history, that... American history. Mar- Mar- yeah, 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 American history. Um, because in their eyes, they think bartenders are drug dealers. <laughs> this is, you know, how extreme. But it's just everyone in Boston, you say the word, the wrong, they'll fight you. <laughs> Did you notice the cap I have on? Yeah, exactly. The Red Sox hat? This um, was actually bought in Fenway. Oh, was it? Yep. No way. Yeah way. <laughs> no way that Yucky, was bought in Fenway. Yucky way. <laughs> Yucky way. No way that was bought in Fenway. Oh, Yucky way. <laughs> and it just I just remember people in Boston being very different. Very. I, I remember there was this bar that we'd... Well, a couple stories. This one will be short. We're driving by... Uh, well, three stories. <laughs> Are we talking so, about a building here or you have no, a real three We're stories? Dri- driving by... No, <laughs> I'm building up to it. (laughs) (laughs) Driving by, there's a brawl of about 30 people Mm -hmm. outside. We had just left the bar, and we walked through like it started building, and we like got the hell out because we're like, we don't want to because everyone's just hitting whoever's around. Saw this one guy who had this guy by his shirt. He the guy was passed out because he had been beaten he was like out because he'd been punched <laughs> so hard and we're watching this guy we're in traffic and the guy's just keeps hitting him <laughs> the guy's out cold and then and then he takes this huge swing and misses him and slams his fist into the sidewalk <laughs> and i'm sure he broke his hand oh probably oh yeah <laughs> so that was great <laughs> then another time we're coming out of a nightclub we're coming up commonwealth avenue back you know, and this uh, friend of ours who was the designated driver is there, and I'm shotgun, and my friend Chris and my other friend are in the back. Chris is in the back seat behind the driver, and there's a lot of traffic, uh-huh. and and this car was trying to make a U.E. on Comad, which is a major thoroughfare goes by Boston University and up to Boston College, where mm-hmm. I went, and and uh, so Allison's driving, and. Chris, unbeknownst to me, this this car of like football players or something from BU or something or trying to get in, and she doesn't let him in, and Chris flips the bird to them. Now we're in bumper to bumper traffic, going, going nowhere. You're like, and we get up as soon as it stops. All of a sudden, I hear this thump, thump, thump. <laughs> this dude's out of the car trying to kick the window in. <laughs> And, it's and then the thing. Boston he, people don't care. He opens do the, he opens his door, pulls Chris out, and starts pummeling the shit out of him. Hey, I get out. I look down and I see. Now, now I'm old enough that like Coke came in bottles at one point. <laughs> glass glass bottles. Rainbows were glass, black and white. Yeah, glass <laughs> glass bottles. And uh, I'm like, Allison, you got a weapon or anything? But I reached down and grabbed this coke thing pick up his fucking plastic i'm like oh shit because because i was gonna smash it and fucking i, you know, I was You're in like, boston i was like fuck 
<laughs> and I got out, and he's like, you want some of this? And he comes, he fucking pops, he comes around and pops me. And I just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I punched him, and then he went back to beat up on Chris. And then all his friends were out in the front of the car. Like yeah. he, was the only, he was a big guy. Yeah. A lot bigger than I am. <laughs> now, the other guy was a pussy and just stayed in the car. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you helped out a lot. But I had like a nice, well, you know, on my chin. He got me in the chin. But I went out and I was fucking enraged. And I went and, and the guys that were that came out of the car, like they backed away from me because I came at them. And that, but I, but then I saw a cop car. Yeah. And this cop, I said, hey. And they came out and they arrested the, you know, these guys and yeah. stuff. But. But that's the way Boston is. Like they okay, don't, no, they don't even warn you. They just kick your fucking window out and boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't I was get... like, I was sitting there and I'm like, I hear this thump, thump. I'm like, what the fuck? And this guy's trying to kick the window in. You're like my ex girlfriend walking down the street. But, so we, a couple of roommates and I were on Newberry Street, which is a big street in Boston, and we were at this sports bar called Daisy Buchanan's, mm -hmm. like the, you know, a lot of famous sports. You know, Bruins, Patriots, mm. they'll go there, and you'll you'll see these famous guys. Well, we were there, and my two roommates, roommates and I went in to take a leak in the bathroom. And we're in there, and my one roommate, Drew, was just a cocky little... He was always getting the shit beaten out of him. <laughs> like, so like, like literally, like, teeth knocked out. Jesus. And I mean, I saw him one day. He came... He worked at Legal Seafoods, mm -hmm. and... Uh, he eventually became a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. He's he like, was, if I have to keep working. healing, I better fix myself. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he was so cocky. And so we go in and he starts talking shit about like how he works there or we serve. And this this guy, the like the fourth guy who was in the restroom, actually was like on his night off and did work there. Oh, and geez. he got like all pissed off. And he was drunk. He yeah. was hammered. But so... You know, we get out, and he starts talking smack and all this stuff, and Drew was kind of a pussy, and hey, but he started talking smack to him, and mm -hmm. then I got in on it, and the, this guy did the greatest move I've ever seen in a bar fight. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was against me. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> was, was, I, I just started, you know, I got in. What he did, he just, he had a beer full, a, a glass full of beer. Mm-hmm. And he just threw it in my face uh -huh. and blinded me and went just boom. <laughs> and my glasses flew off. And then I went apes. I went back at him. I just started boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and then there, all of a sudden there were like four bouncers. Uh -huh. But that adrenaline gets going. Uh -huh. And they had a wall of beer bottles and cans. They're like, <laughs> they're just, I mean, like hundreds of them. <laughs> And so there were like three bouncers grabbing me, and I'm grabbing him by the throat, uh. and I drag him and shove him and <laughs> knock the whole fucking collection of bottles and cans <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> I, I was unstoppable. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> I could have been in the NFL for for thirty seconds, <laughs> scored a touchdown, <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so then I went back because he spit in my face too, yeah. and that was what really set me off. Um, You're like, I haven't felt this since college. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in college then. <laughs> but then we got the, the so like someone handed me my glasses, and I'm like, Did you see that? He spit in my face. I was, wasn't very nice. <laughs> and we went out, and my car was parked, and Drew was just like, What the fuck just happened? That was he was laughing his ass off. We drove yeah, off. Yeah, because for the first time, Drew didn't get his ass kicked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that dude was always getting his ass kicked. It was incredible. And oh, like, like so cocky, but like yeah. you know, five foot six, maybe a hundred and sixty pounds. The short guys that are like that. I have no idea why. <laughs> I have no fucking clue why. It's just always the fucking short, short man guy. complex. Yeah, short man complex. It's like you have to fucking prove something. But he just gets beaten up. He would just get beaten up so bad. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Yeah. <sighs> but anyways, uh, yeah. So I think that's about it. That's about all the time we have for today. Really? Yeah. An hour goes by quick. It does. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks again for coming on. Jay, you're a pussy. Um, <laughs> Hope the AIDS goes away. Yeah. Um, it's like your fourth or fifth time getting it. Yeah. But uh, like I said. How's uh, this herpes going? I don't know. 
It, 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 it's hard. It's it's hard. To I mean, tell. his his mouth was like it looked like a freaking orchid <laughs> full of <laughs> the sores all over it, like an ugly orchid. Orchids are usually pretty. It looked like someone took a purple crayon or marker and just poked it all over. Yeah, or threw darts at his face <laughs> all day. <laughs> He got bad plastic surgery, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. Don't do those self uh, injections of collagen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually, I, I always thought, you know, those little fucking, uh, what was it called? Uh, filters on uh, Snapchat and shit like that that you can do that's like makes you look like a dog oh. and all that stuff. Yeah, that's annoying. I'm like, I'm like you know, I see a lot of whores do it. It's like, a, like all these slutty girls are doing it. I'm like, when are they going to put a herpes filter on it? It's a good idea. <laughs> like to cover your herpes. Plus, uh, anyone out there, uh, it's not attractive. <laughs> it's, it really, it's not even funny. It's Are just you like about the filters. Yeah, yeah, I know. I it's, hate it. it the, especially that dog one. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like, just what are like, you doing? wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I you know I don't know you, I know when I when I see a girl you do could, that you could put a put that on a supermodel and you just be like disappointed yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd be like yeah be like what the fuck's going on yeah like when I see a girl do that and have that filter on I'm like she obviously has daddy issues <laughs> I I just that's what I get from it but anyways yeah that's all the time we have for today thanks again for Kevin to come on like I said Jay you're a little bitch um oh. I think your wife beats you up. But anyways. <laughs> oh, she could take him. <laughs> I know she could. She's pretty strong. Yeah. She's Polish. She so. works out. <laughs> I, I, I work out. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but again, uh, you can find us on um, iTunes, uh, Google Play. Uh, if you want to l- watch something more visual, you can come on YouTube and watch us on here. We are also on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, yeah. And pornplay.com. Yeah, pornplay.com. Oh, dot com. Yeah, <laughs> dot com. So uh, thanks again, um, and everyone have a good week, good day. Hallelujah, amen. And Bye. We'll see you next week. Good seeing you. <laughs> this has been the Openly Hostile Opinions Podcast. <laughs>